we could get started with this part of the budget workshop, I would like to um, just go ahead and um, introduce uh, Ms. O'Connor. I believe that uh, this is the second uh, workshop? Yep, our second workshop. Sure. Um, if we could, before we do that, if we could just stand for the pledge. Thank you. Go ahead. Ready? Yep. Okay, welcome everybody to our second budget meeting. We'll talk about some operational areas tonight, um, specifically buildings and grounds and transportation. So without further ado, I'll introduce Mr. Mike Cruz, who is our uh, plant facilities administrator. Good evening. I'd like to thank the Board of Education for giving me the opportunity uh, to um, present our proposed B&G budget. I'd like to start off with 1620-1600 uh, operational non-instructional salaries. That's done at um, Central as well as 1620-1610. That's overtime as well. Um, and also operational non-instructional uh, like substitutes and night uh, differentials. 1622,000 is operational equipment. This code is used to purchase equipment like district vehicles, forklifts that are used daily. Uh, this is to increase the uh, or to upgrade the district's aging fleet, requesting a 100% increase. 1620-4210, operational for, uh, fire insurance. This code is used to provide commercial property insurance for all district buildings. A 3.5% increase is being proposed to cover anticipated costs of coverage for 22-23. 1620-4330, operational installation of purchasing and leasing of containers. This code is used to maintain leasing fees for the growing need of storage containers. Examples are building lights, disposal, uh, related maintenance storage containers like food service, etc. This is being held level. 1620-4350, operational uni uniform rental. This code is used to lease buildings and grounds, uniforms on contract, <coughs> requesting an increase of 8% due to the rising cost of uniform cleaning. 1620-4400, operational professional and tech services. This is for new employee drug testing, underground storage tank permits, material safety data compliance sheets, school dude work order software, boiler inspections, Tetratech architects, services, and vehicle tracking solution. This is being held level. 1620-4611, operational cartage dumping. This code is used for the rental of garbage containers and related cardboard disposal services. This is being held level. 1620-4620, operational exterminator. This code is used to provide pest extermination services for the district. This is also being held level. 1620-4641, operational fuel oil. This code is used to purchase fuel oil needed to heat district buildings. We mostly use gas. This is being held level. 1620-4660, operational building repairs. This code is used to make expected and unexpected repairs to all district buildings, including cesspools, roofs, abatements, boiler cleaning, gym wall inspections. We're proposing a 7.6 increase due to the rising cost of contractor services to continue improvements in building renovations. 1620-4680, operational upkeep of grounds. This code is used to make expected and unexpected repairs to all district properties, irrigation, sport fields, paint, signage, ice melt, mulch fertilizer, and seed. This is being held level. 1620-4690, operational propane natural gas. This code is used to purchase natural gas needed to assist in heating district buildings and also supplying gas in kitchens for cooking. An increase of 4.8% is required to cover anticipated supply costs. 1620-4770, operational electricity is used to cover the cost of electricity for all district buildings. A decrease of 100% is due to expected implementation of the district's EPC solar projects going online and feeding the electrical grid. 1620-4780, operational telephone. This is, is used for telephone communication is being reduced uh, by 5,000 due to a decrease in use of analog to digital access. 1620-4785, uh, 
operational water is used to pay for the water needs of the district, which includes cooking, pool maintenance, irrigation for athletic fields. This is being held level. Sixteen twenty forty nine hundred operational services from BOCES is used for providing technical testing services like lab results for abatements and lead in water testing in Telepath, J.C. Broderick, Environmental Services, and in HERA, to name a few. An increase of 71.4% is requested due to increase of environmental services and the recent changes in lead and water requirements. 1620, 5,000 operational supplies. This is a supply code to reflect its use for purchasing office supplies, furniture supplies, and in addition, use for supply purchase of in house renovations and improves, uh, for example, framing, sheetrock, etc. Requesting an increase uh, to continue various school renovation projects. 1620, 5,100. Operational pool supplies is used to purchase pool chemicals like chlorine, pH chemicals, and additional pool supplies. This is being held level. 1620, 5400, operational custodial supplies. This code is used to purchase cleaning supplies like paper products, detergents, and sanitary chemical supplies used daily by all building cleaning staff. Requesting an increase of 12.5% due to our continued efforts in providing additional sanitizing products and equipment to improve our cleaning capabilities. 1620, 5410, operational playground equipment. This code is used to purchase replacement playground equipment, parts as needed. This is being held level. 1620, 5440, operational electrical supplies. This is used to purchase supplies needed to repair and expand electrical systems district-wide. We're holding this level. 1620, 5500, operational glass supplies. This code is used to purchase glass and window repair supplies district-wide. Requesting an increase of 75% due to the need of repairs of our aging windows and an increased use due to COVID. 1620, 5510. Operational painting supplies is used to purchase paints, paint brushes, and materials where needed, requesting an increase of 18% as part of our renovation projects in the district. 1620 5530, operational heating supplies is used to purchase replacement parts as needed to keep district boilers, UVs, and air handlers operating. This is being held level. 1620 5560, operational roofing and caulking. This code is used to purchase roofing membrane and materials needed to repair roofs. This is being reduced to 20,000 due to a numerous building roof replacements and, and prevent, preventive maintenance. Six, um, 1620, 5610, operational ceiling supplies. This code, this code is used to purchase ceiling tiles for repairs due to water damage or renovations. This is being held level. 1620, 5620, operational flooring supplies. This code is used to purchase replacement floor tiles, rugs, stair treads, and related supplies. This is being held level. 1620 5630 operational shade and blind supplies this code is used to purchase supplies for repairs to shades and blinds district wide this is being held le level um let me see 1621 1600 maintenance non-instructional salaries that's done by contract 1621 1610 maintenance non-instructional salaries overtime this is used for additional hours that are needed for maintenance staff which includes sporting events music functions inclement weather and emergency maintenance repairs as well as renovations and improvements where needed. Requesting an 8.3% uh, increase as part of building improvements and also building coverage for after school and weekend activities. 1621-2000, maintenance equipment. This is used to purchase new equipment as needed. We are in the process of replacing aging equipment. Examples are grounds and maintenance vehicles, plows for snow removal and large field mowing equipment. This is being held level. 1621 4650 maintenance building equipment repairs this code is used to make expected and unexpected repairs to all bng maintenance and grounds equipment this is being held level now we're going into the maintenance codes uh, 1621 4670 maintenance building equipment repairs this code is used to make preventative maintenance repairs and expected repairs to equipment in all buildings Tasks include parking drainage, roof drainage, elevator repairs, building air management and exhaust fans, etc. We're requesting an increase of 27.2% to continue with repairs to aging equipment. Examples are uh, building management system controllers, aging HVAC air handlers. Uh, the next code is 1621-4680, maintenance improvement of grounds, is used for ma maintaining district-wide grounds, requesting it be held level. 
1621-5420, maintenance welding supplies. This code is used to purchase materials and supplies for welding repairs district-wide. This is used by our auto shop, plumbers, and heating technicians. We're holding this level. 1621-5450, maintenance uh, plumbing supplies. This is used for the purchase of materials and supplies for plumbing repairs district-wide. We're proposing an increase of 50% due to the state's updated lead and water testing requirements, which have reduced the, the parts per billion threshold from 15 parts per billion to 5 parts per billion in the district water supplies. 1621-5460, maintenance hardware supplies is for hardware supplies purchase, purchases used by all trades. An in increase of 6000 is required as part of the district's renovation and repair products. Items that are purchased here are at times available using this code. 1621-5470, maintenance lumber supplies is used for purchasing lumber and related materials to manufacture cl classroom sink countertops, window counters, and, and also renovation projects. An increase of 75% is requested to continue the district's renovation and improvements. 1621-5480, maintenance metal and fence supplies is used for purchase of fencing supplies and related materials, uh, gate hinges, etc. This is being held level. 1621-5490, maintenance tool supplies is used for the purchase and repair of tools used in our maintenance and grounds department. This is also being held level. Um, the, the remaining, one, two, three, four, five, six, 1621, uh, actually maintenance tool supplies, maintenance fertilizer, fertilizer and seed, maintenance locksmith supplies, maintenance asphalt, maintenance mason, masonry and sand, ma maintenance salt, they are all being held level. Um, and that's about it as far as uh, the Builders and Grounds proposal. If anyone has any questions. Yeah, I, I have a question. So, sure. um, uh, 4650 uh, B&G Equipment and Repairs. Did you say we're replacing vehicles? Um, yes. We are, right? Yes, we are. So There's what, quite what? a few. All, most of our vehicles, they're, they're in, um, in pretty bad shape. Yeah, no, I, exactly. And, and I yeah. agree with you. And mm -hmm. I agree with you wholeheartedly. What kind of vehicles do you uh, expect to be, how many vehicles and what kind of vehicles are, do you expect to be uh, uh, replacing this year? Um, I'm, we're uh, actually looking into, at the very least, four. Uh, we're looking at pick, uh, pickup trucks and also uh, vans. What's unfortunate is we've already started that process of trying to get uh, proposals. What's unfortunate is that there's not, um, there's not too much supply Supplies. out there. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, I'm kind of hoping that, you know, that we could you know, definitely find something so we don't, um, you know, we don't lose out. <laughs> so, I, I, the only reason why I'm bringing it up is because what is the total that you're proposing for the 2022, uh, uh, the, this, this following school year? What, I don't have it in front of me. I see 55,000. And it seems a little low. It's, it's actually the code above that, the 2000 yeah. level code, where you'd buy um, vehicles from the equipment code. And there's an additional equipment code in the 1620 area as well. Yes. Mm -hmm. That we increased quite a bit in the 1620 area. Okay, so it's the 2000 yes. code. It's the 1620. Yeah. It's the 1622,000. Okay, that makes, yeah. that right. makes sense, much yeah. more sense. I think that right? still low. Still low. 75 yeah. grand there. But. Yeah. And you have the 140,000. Exactly. Yeah. And the yeah. 1621, 2000. Right. 1621. 2000. 2000. And which is the other code? There's 16, uh, all the, the ones that end in 2000. So 1620, 2000 and 1621, 2000. So one has 140,000 in it. 2000. I have what I think may be a related question. So uh, and when you finish, you okay, 150. So, so, so there's 290,000 in equipment. In this area, and, th and that is specifically for vehicles, right? Specifically for B and G, it could be other things. Uh, exactly, that specifically that for vehicles for B and G. It could be other things other, other than yeah, uh, other vehicles equipment. as well. Okay, and I guess that's the next question that I had, um, and I don't know if forty six seventy would apply, but I remember when we did, uh, Paul and I did the tours of B and G, um, that. That storage facility, that warehouse facility, that looked like an old hangar. Yeah. Um, you know, it's it's yeah, the so, so building. you know, 12 years ago when we were walking through it, or maybe even 10 years ago when we were walking through it, it needed to be replaced. I don't know if we ever did anything with that, but you know, certainly now, you know, when we have the money to do these things, these projects within the district, 
something like that should be looked into. Is that what you're referring to here? Is that something that you are looking yeah, at here? Yeah, we, we definitely are exploring all that. We do have a few proposals, um, but so unfortunate, again, materials. Um, at times, you know, they'll, they'll give us a proposal and we say, listen, we'd like, we, definitely, we definitely need some shelter for many of the equipment that we have. But um, we are definitely looking into that. We do have quite a few proposals. Okay, so that's built into, into your budget mm. now? Yes. Okay, so specifically that entire building that's on that the, east side, the east side, east side, all the way in the back, mm -hmm. to get our equipment out of the climate and into. That's what we're planning. That, that's what we're wishing. <laughs> no, for. I, I, I get it. I get it. I just want to make sure that that is exactly what it was what's being planned. We're, we're actually looking at you know I, the the um, the area that you're referring to is called a Butler uh, building, and it's we're trying to get one um, constructed on the other side. Uh, in order to remove the one that you're referring to, that is that's going to uh, create a uh, an abatement because it's it is considered, um, you know, part of a building. Believe it or not, so there, you know, there's a lot going on with that. So we, you know, yeah, it's it's a process. So you want to you want to build the replacement before you we actually take. We're that we're down. actually holding all the equipment now. Yeah, okay. as soon as you drive up on the left hand side, that's where the um, the green machine trailer is, and um, you know yeah. quite a few of the you know the. Uh, the yep. lawn cutting machines. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Mike has done quite a bit of work in that area when you drive into the right to right. really clean it out. So it's it's yeah. looking. Yeah, that better that was well. that was yeah. a, a it was a boneyard and that was where we had a lot of <laughs> it really was. I mean, yeah, definitely. So, yeah, yeah. All right, that's that's great because again, you know, we you know we absolutely you know have you know uh, been blessed with a tremendous amount of funding and now it's time to. Rebuild the district, really. I mean, that's really what we're talking about, so that we are, you know, setting us up for the next 50 years to come. That's um, the game plan. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And I would just, and I would just, you know, I would just say, um, you know, and I've, and I've had this conversation with Stacy, you know, when we are replacing the equipment, when we are looking at this, we have to look for longevity. Mm -hmm. So sometimes the cheaper way out is not necessarily the best way if we're looking to, you know, build the community back or the district back for the next 50 years. You know, the, the gauge on the steel, you know, might be thinner on the cheaper product uh, um, and we might get it for less money. We might want to consider going with something that's a little bit better, a little bit more longevity. Uh, just, I know you're an expert in this, but I just wanted to... Yeah, we know, definitely, um, and we always try to do that, but we also have to be considerate that, you know, we definitely want to kind of make sure, sure. that we're not you know, sure. overusing the funds, so to sure. speak. Sure, sure. Definitely. Sure. So, well, Mike, you mentioned something about windows earlier. Are we replacing mm -hmm. all the windows or some of the windows? What we're doing is um, the windows uh, were installed, I would say, about uh, nine, maybe ten years ago. Mm -hmm. And so they're now getting to that point where they're, the mechanical aspect of it, like, you know, what we call the balancers, they're starting to fail. Mm -hmm. And so now with the, also with the increase of opening and closing the windows, it's, it's definitely becoming a lot more troublesome for, you know, the faculty and staff to be able to lift some of them. So we've been replacing uh, quite a few, and you know that could be that's reflective on our drawdown accounts. Right. Yeah. And I know that in the past we've had broken windows, and we used to have glazers that came in and took care mm -hmm. of that. Are we replacing that position? So what we've been doing is I've we've been instructing our own guys, mm -hmm. uh, like the heads and chiefs, to do those types of maintenance with the assistance of our maintenance crew. Um, that that's a huge savings as opposed to having a company come in and replace all you know those windows. It's just that becomes you know uh, astronomical in my opinion, and, and this is something that our guys can do, um, and they have been doing actually. So if we're replacing a window, can we add a window AC? <laughs> <laughs> Not that simple. <laughs> Uh, I have a question. Oh, go ahead. Oh, yeah, uh, just going back to 14, 1621, 4670. Mm -hmm. So I also had a little mark on that because it's repairs. I know you just explained that's going to include the rebuilding or building a new building. But it just sounded to me like 350000 is a lot of money for repairs if we're buying new equipment. And along the same line that Robert mentioned, is it worth holding on to old equipment and putting money into repairs? Or? Right, this particular code, the one you're referring to, is that 1621 4670? 4670. All right, that's used for um, preventative, preventative maintenance repairs um, when things, you know, break down, uh, it's parking drainage. Um, we have, I mean, we have numerous uh, parking lots, one of which uh, East Meadow, uh, most, some of those cesspools uh, collapsed 
And so they all have to be, you know, um, it's getting to the point where now, because of the age of all of, you know, the, our buildings, we have to, you know, re uh, repairs, you know, or not just repairs, but, you know, um, replace. Um, I mean, so this also includes the elevator repairs and also the uh, building uh, air management, the BMS system. Um, those are all yeah, new electronic that. equipments with our, I believe it's the previous e EPC. Uh, they replaced a, a lot, well actually they installed a lot of BMS systems where, you know, we can actually manage this from our computer, you know, each one of the buildings. So many of the controllers, you know, that, you know, like they speak to each other and then they speak to a main uh, computer, so to speak, um, they're starting to fail. And, you know, we have to replenish that. That definitely comes with a cost. Um, that's what we're starting to see in quite a few buildings and thus the reasoning behind that increase. In addition to that also is some of this stuff you can't find. Once it breaks down, usually we can get a replacement. Um, but because of the, um, the age of the equipment, believe it or not, the electronic equipment is after like five years, they, um, they're obsolete. obsolete. And so now you're you know, kind of like, you know, you have to purchase something that's you know, a little bit newer. Um, and you know, it's, it's, you know, for, for communication purposes and all that, it's, it just, it, th that's the reason for this increase. Thank you, that explains it. So what we were discussing before is not on the same line? The, the building at the... Um, at no, the, the vehicles would come from the code above that with 1621 2000. Right, not just the vehicles, but the actual, like that Hi. air hangar. The, the building. Butler building. Which line is that under? Um, that would be... Um, Interesting. I mean, we we would probably build that into like a bond issue or something. Right, I don't think that's yeah. Yeah, because that that, that, yeah, that exceeds that, but we still can purchase, you know, uh, like sheds or stuff like, you know, so we can at yeah. the very least, you know, um, protect the, the equipment that we have now. Right. But I, I, maybe I misunderstood. I thought that we were building a new structure so that we can demolish the old one. We are looking into We're look, doing yeah. that, but it's not in this budget. It's not going to be in, in a in a line item like this. Yeah, no. it'll be in a transfer to capital line or something. That'll be a the big budget. expenditure. Yeah, that requires uh, building, um, you know, permits and you know, uh, approvals from the town and yeah. Does so that have to go to SED? Yeah, that does yes, too, so, right? Yeah, yeah. So there's, there's it's quite a process, as you know. Okay. So but yeah, it, that no, would I, come from our probably our capital reserve capital fund. Reserve. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. I just thought we were having the discussion about this line item right. in relation to that, yeah. so I was a little confused. So I just want to say that that, that, um, that in the meantime, there is a plan to get uh, replacement buildings that Those aren't what he just mentioned as the temporary you know, exactly mm -hmm. to get yeah, mm -hmm. and that would come from this line. <laughs> yes, it would. From forty-six. Um, that's just for preventive maintenance. Sixteen twenty-one forty-six seventy. Uh, right, the that's other. the one that I'm talking about. That okay. So it I depends how we would go about the project, where we would put it in the budget, so we'd have to kind of figure out our plan of attack. And then but those temporary structures are yeah. coming out of 4670, right? They're going to be in the budget somewhere, probably even a transfer to capital for that. Just to, you know, that's more of a one time expenditure. This is his ongoing operating budget. Oh, okay. All right. But I, because we just said 4670, the, the temporary structures, maybe. He had started, at, Robert had started on 4670 about the vehicles, but then we said, no, that's in 2000. And then we got into talking right, no, about the about temporary, the, uh, the All right. So the temporary structures are not in this budget either, or they are in 4670? It's not in that budget line, okay. no. Because even the playgrounds, he has the operation of keeping, of keeping the playground, mm -hmm. so you don't actually have the new playground. Correct. Off. That's not in this code. Right. No, definitely not. Yeah, that's just for repairs. That's actually very minimal. That's I, I think yeah. that's about two. Yeah, it's very, very Yeah, it's not. Marian, I'm glad you brought that up, actually, because we, we just received the bulletin in our homes this week, and I had in it that all the elementary schools were getting new playgrounds, and I don't remember having that discussion. So I know yeah. some have throughout, you know, recent years, but not all. And it said all elementary and middle schools. Is that something that... We're having... We did have a lot of different discussions about the playgrounds. <laughs> Uh, as a matter of fact, I think we're having uh, the breaking ground at North Middle. Right? Yes. Remember we discussed, oh my God, what, what is that thing called again? Ninja uh, course. Ninja mm -hmm. Oh, Ninja <laughs> course, right, yeah. Right. But it's not at all the middle schools, right? am I correct? So yeah, not it is. All of the elementary schools are getting uh, right. a playground. But it did say that in the bulletin. It did. I, I it just did. feel, Art, you know. No, but, okay, so the middle schools are getting the Ninja playgrounds and also the freshman, freshman center. Freshman center as well. Um, the other, actually, I believe it's Oak Park. Pine Park and well, Southwest. They are getting. That's Oak Park. 
right? Yeah. Old Park is getting a sensory playground as well as Southwest, Southwest, Southwest. is getting a sensory playground. And also East K, right? East. I know there were three in our plan that are right. still on mm -hmm. our website. So right. that's why I was confused when I read that old schools were going. Right. Yeah. And the others are also getting yeah, playgrounds, but getting not as uh, the century. Not those special ones. Yeah. Not so we are special. getting new playgrounds yes, for all we are. elementary schools? Yes. Okay. Are we able to do one for um, for MDQ and, and the and the uh, UPK over there? No, we couldn't build on their property. That's not ours. Ah. Where is that? And, and UK. MDQ. Yeah. I mean, UPK. The oh, UPK MDQ. at um, right. the Shepherd's Gate in MDQ. Okay, I have a question, yes. yes. Um, on page 2, 1625,000 operational supplies. Can you just explain the increase there? What number, Paul? 1625,000. 1625,000? That's operational supplies? Yes. This is uh, supply clothes code to reflect this, um, the purchasing of, um, in the past we used it for office supplies um, and furniture supplies, uh, and now it's, we're also using it for um, additional purchases for in-house renovations and, and improvements. Uh, for example, uh, framing, you know, all of the renovations, you know, the, those materials have to come out of an operational supply code. Okay. So you put, you added more um, items to that budget? Basically. Yeah, because it's an operational supply code. Um, sometimes, you know, we, I mean, we try to utilize the codes as best as possible wherever the vendor, um, where, wherever it, the vendor, you know, um, is on that list, on that supply code list. Um, so, so sometimes we're not successful. They might not have the materials, so we have to branch out and get another, you know, try to utilize another code that has a vendor that has the materials that we need so that we can continue with um, the renovation. Do you find now with things increasing and right. you can't get certain supplies? And we what do. you do, it's costing more money? We do. We definitely do. We're, it's, it's, um, it's, <laughs> it just adds to a difficult task. Um, you know, trying to get the materials, sometimes we can't. Uh, sometimes we have to, you know, uh, kind of like uh, order it from different vendors, uh, which at times makes it difficult because we know we can get it, you know, at a much lesser cost. But because that the first vendor doesn't have it in stock, now we have to spend a little bit more in, uh, in order to, to complete that task. I wouldn't say surcharges. Every vendor has their own uh, purchasing list. Um, I wouldn't really call it surcharges. They might be surcharges, but you know we're, we're not going to see that. It's always hidden in the cost. <laughs> How many um, sanitizer machines do we currently have in district? Which type of sanitizer? For COVID-19. Okay, we actually, I believe, each building should have a Victory Spare. Um, that's something that we purchased last year. Uh, we have backpacks, and um, in the event that th we don't have uh, each building, or let's say sometimes you know we get a request to have them, in, you know, like um, like in the high school, so to speak. It's a very large school, obviously. So we'll, you know, if there is a request to have specific areas um, done, we'll take the machines from one, let's say, elementary school, and we'll bring it to the high school, so that you know there's. Uh, uh, let me see, in the Ross there's about 11 guys or 12 guys at night, and in the Sondling there's about 15 guys at night. Um, so, you know, that's, you know, we try to kind of like make sure that we can utilize the time frame, you know, that shift to be able to, you know, um, get as much possible yield, you know, in, in sanitizing. Are we purchasing any additional? Yeah, we definitely, uh, we are, that's definitely on the list. What, what's, um, the product that we use, it has a shelf life. Right. So we have to be careful of, you know, not purchasing too much, but, but have enough. Mm -hmm. um, that, that particular product, unfortunately, everybody wants it, and, you know, that comes with a cost. Mm -hmm. You know, supply and demand, that's where the prices come up. I'm sure there's a surcharge in there, too. <laughs> mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, you know what's unfortunate, like in the high school and a couple of other schools, and we're actually, I, I'm making up a list. Um, there are numerous ceiling tiles, like one by one ceiling tiles. Um, actually, I believe in uh, South Middle and, and East Middle, they have one by four uh, ceiling tiles that you can't even buy that. 
Um, but in the areas that we can, yeah, we, we are definitely trying to replenish as much of the ceiling tiles because some of them are atrocious, unfortunately, but, you know. Uh, we have. We have. We, we have definitely, we've removed quite a few. You know, what's unfortunate is at night, uh, actually, we can only do most of that work at night. And again, that comes with a cost so over time, the maintenance guys and all. But um, in the summertime, we try to capitalize on that. Our guys, again, we're training our guys on how to replace them. That's, you know, not an easy task, um, especially, you know, when you want it done right. <laughs> We're going to replace a lot of that at the high school through the bond issue we passed last May. Oh, okay. um, so that'll get done at least at the high school. The freshman center, when you walk in, we replaced yeah, all of replaced. that already. That was yeah. through the energy performance. That looks fantastic. Um, down here in this building, we did the West Wing, if you look there. And um, any place that they're doing new construction um, or renovations, I should say, like special services or, you know, even on the second floor now what they're doing, it's all new ceilings. Yeah. It's my hope that we get rid of all of the stained. Yeah. You know, it's, it's not yeah. pleasing to the eye, you yeah. know, as a taxpayer, I'm like, and I know the money that's coming into the district, you know, that's not our only concern. We also want to put money into the education for our students. But, you know, it's, you know, you don't want to students sitting in a leaking room or, you know, a, a dirty room because it makes it look dirty. It might be clean, but if I come in, you know, I just, my eye will go right to that spot and I'm yeah. like, it is over here. I'm like, okay, what, what are we going to do with that one? But, um, yeah, it, it, <laughs> it, it, it pains me to see that, you know? trust me, and every time I go into one of the buildings, I'm, you know, like, I have quite a, an extensive list of things that I want to do. <laughs> Unfortunately, right. we're a little limited with that, but in addition to the ceiling tiles, when we're replacing them, uh, we're also replacing uh, the lighting as well. So that also gives it sort of like a nice ambient, you know, okay. uh, feeling as you're walking in the hallway or whatever yeah. offices, you know. Because it's important to feel welcoming Definitely. each building. Oh, absolutely. Definitely. I mean, but to, but to your credit, Mike, I mean, I just, you know, we are now able to do work right. that was just a patch job before. Now we can renovate. Now we can replace because the money is, you know, is there and it's in the pipeline. Um, so I think that, you know, we'll, it'll be years right. before, uh, you know, before we finish that list. And by the no, time we finish the list, we'll have a new list. I appreciate yeah. you know, the no, work no, you I guys get are it. doing. Yeah. I, as just as a board member and a parent and grandparent in the district, you know, I, I wonder as well. You yeah, know? yeah, yeah, definitely. You know, I'm going to yeah. ask the hard questions just like everybody else. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> Trust yeah. me, I'm so. capitalizing on the fact that we uh, have a. <laughs> yeah, you know, and, right. and I understand. <laughs> yeah. It's like a home, right? You start fixing the bathroom, and then by the time the bathroom's starting to, you know, get itself together, now something's blown in the kitchen, and now you got to start that project. So it's always going to be a project. Definitely. Right? Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Well, whenever we do a, uh, any type of renovation, that's my first thing. Um, I want to replace all of the wiring, the aging wire, um, especially like in this building. This building is, was built a long time ago, and at any uh, possible opportunity we would have, you know, to replace, you know, uh, not just the um, electrical, but also, you know, the, we always have the uh, IT guys come in, replace the also the net, network drops, you know. Um, yeah, we definitely capitalize on that. I, I'm not one for band-aids, you know. It's you know, I just I'm not for that. I, I like to do the job, you know, right the first time, you know, because right. we don't have the we barely have the time to do it right the first time, you know. Right. So I have a question: Are there any projects that we can't? Not that we want to put off. Obviously, we need the really, you know, um, critical projects. But because supplies are so expensive. Mm -hmm. Do we anticipate that at some point they'll come down? Or are there any projects we can kind of, you know, hover around and wait till, you know, maybe they come down? The crazy part about that is that, you know, this particular, I don't even think you can call it a trend. <laughs> um, it's, it's so unpredictable. It's like and if we even consider waiting to do the work that, you know, we should be doing, it's, it's just, I mean, we're, I, in my opinion, we're already kind of like a little bit behind. Okay. So we try, I try, you know, like, I, I just want to, I just want to push forward. No, I get you know, it. It's, but, you know, like I, I know there's examples. big uh, projects that sometimes I've even talked to Stacy about it. I, you know, I kind of feel like sometimes like the lockers that are being replaced, you know, that, you know, the, the, um, the quote has changed a couple of times. Mm -hmm. But um, my fear is that later on it might go up even Very higher. Probably. So let's get it done now, right. you know. And all these uh, projects that are in this budget are realistic. Like we're going to be able to get them done. Absolutely. <laughs> that's, that's my goal, definite. I mean, I, I uh, yeah. Yeah, definite. Does any of Thank your you. electrical tie in with, like, say, vibing with security? 
do you guys kind of share a cost on some of the electrical um, or some of those projects? Because I know we had a presentation, I want to say, what, four or five years ago, where yeah. we were thinking about implementing a whole new system, PA system, lockdown system. We did. Oh, we did. Any we did. kind of projects yeah. that we do, I always confer with Candace. Um, I always talk with Byron. I, um, I send out cal calendar invites, letting them know what we're doing, what we're, uh, if a contract is going to be in the building. Uh, we always have that conversation beforehand. Uh, you know, I try to get as much input as possible. <coughs> Yeah, I just uh, so I just wanted to make you know, a, I guess a comment and maybe just ask Stacy. So, um, on the um, that hundred thousand dollar drop in terms of electricity, um, and that's uh, forty seven seventy sixteen twenty forty seven seventy. Mm -hmm. I see the trend is you know it continues to go down since the nineteen twenty right. Um, it's a hundred thousand dollars now. It, it, we may actually see more of a savings right than that so yeah. we're that's the idea there's so a very good chance that that we'll see more of a savings you yep. know as all of our solar panels come online mm -hmm. i didn't you know mike and i talked about this too you know should we drop it more <coughs> we just want to wait until it's online we know it's operational yep. and then the following year i anticipate a, a large drop yeah in that's that that's great and, and listen and i and i always have you know uh, admired how how you you do the budgeting because it is on a conservative side um but i just you know i just wanted to make note you know of, of that that you know it is trending down mm -hmm. and we are not even fully operational yet so that is going to be very exciting for for the district and for um you know for the taxpayers you know that that is uh mm -hmm. wonderful news i mean how how much longer before you think we are done with with the with the solar project <laughs> um the high school is going to be the big project i don't even think we're going to touch that till next summer okay so i would say maybe the end of next year till we're done 2023 yeah. oh no the end of uh, this year 23 yeah i'm sorry the end of this year when she said next summer this summer it's come yeah this, this summer, summer of 22 yeah, i'm sorry crazy. it's the next school year <laughs> this summer, summer of 22. we anticipate doing yeah. the uh, high school and yeah. i just wanted to clarify my question about the pa system a lot of parents don't real didn't realize or do not realize that we had replaced all of the systems and within the district and we have right. new me lockdown mechanisms so it's you know just a reiteration of the we, fact we that did. we did take care of that Something separately, I haven't really had a chance to talk to uh, Stacy about this, mm -hmm. but I would like to see some of our front doors. Now that we do yeah. have, uh, we do have extra money, I would like to look at some of our, particularly starting with the elementary schools, some of the front doors. There are actually safety doors that you can now purchase, and they're fairly expensive. Uh, but you, you know, I think it's worth to exploring and looking at the front doors in the elementary school, and then you have uh, it's, man what is traps? It called? the trap door. Man uh, traps? Uh, yeah. What's that? We call them man traps. Man traps, thank the you. Second right. set of trap doors. Door. Oh. The, you know, I want to look to, we want to look to getting in the man traps, which means that you, you can come through the front door but not go through the second door. That's right. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you take a look at our doors, they're old. I mean, they're, they're old. And I think it's time that we take a look at the type of doors that we purchase and replace and then also the security system at that door mm -hmm. but we have you know i think candace and, and her crew they've added the cameras obviously we have them in all of the uh doors now you, right. co you come up you have your doorbell you have your camera that's uh on the principal's desk that's on uh, some of the clerical's desks as well as in also the uh, security desk at the front so we've done a lot but i think the next is now we start looking at those entryway mm -hmm. doors. Yeah. I guess that's a, for uh, another conversation when Byron comes to present. Yeah, you know what? He absolutely should be a part of it. Obviously, Mike will be, uh, you know, part of it as well. But and I haven't had an opportunity because it's actually been something I've been, you know, kind of reading and researching myself. And I do think it's something that the district should consider. Yeah. As we go forward. Along that line, can we get rid of some of the old non-functioning bells in the building? I'm pretty sure we still have, you know, every building is different, but sometimes you can, it's not just us, because I go to other districts too, and sometimes there's three doorbell buttons, but only one works, or one is the one that's actually going to put the door open. So if we could somehow get like a handle on that at some point, 
I think sure. it would be easier for We do that on purpose because we have a little fun <laughs> watching people press the different buttons. It's the only fun we get, <laughs> the door, really. The door's different. <laughs> the door's different. You know, school's different. By the time you get to that one, it's the other one. <laughs> oh, right. oh, that's true, yeah. too, right? We, yeah. we yeah. enter yeah. in different doors, yeah. right? So somehow I would like uniformity. I like that. There must have been a reason behind that. I'm not sure what the reason was, but there, some of the doors are different. You're right. I do want to say that you know Mike is has been incredible. Uh, he, you know he really does amazing work for us. Now the energy performance contract that's been nonstop now for I don't know about four years now, right? I mean, really, and you know Mike is there for every project, every project. Now, we've done some work here. We've done some work over at Special Services. Uh, we're constantly, you know, reconfiguring offices throughout the, the, the buildings, the high school. You know, we're adding, you know, we, we added uh, social workers and guidance counselors. All of that requires a major, you know, requires, you know, construction. And we have carpenters there. We have electricians. We have plumbers. And Mike is involved in every project in the district and I want you to stop and think that we have 17 schools 20 over 20 buildings and he's involved in everything and um, you know he's there at every function this Saturday I wanted to ask him uh, about you know the preparation that's going into the snow uh, that's coming up he will be up uh, as soon as the snow starts he'll probably stay up all Friday night he'll be here all day Saturday and then if it's probably going to require, you know, if it's as bad as they say, work Sunday. on Sunday. And he'll be here on Monday making sure all of the sidewalks are clear. Like, he, he's just involved in everything. Mm -hmm. And I think he should be absolutely applauded because he's a, a tremendous uh, employee for us and really unsung in a lot of, you know, and, and thankless, too, because, you know, anything that goes wrong, we also call him. So when he's talking <laughs> about, like, a, a collapse of a... Uh, you know, uh, cesspool. a cesspool, he's on site, right. okay, and he's on, then he's calling the vendors, and he's there when the contractors show mm -hmm. up, and I talk to him, you know, at all different times of the day and night, always calls back within seconds. If he doesn't pick up the phone, he'll call back, and then there hasn't been one thing I've ever asked, I said, Mike, can you do this? Uh, he goes, uh, I'm on my way over now. Mm -hmm. I and I don't know where he is, but he's somewhere, and he, he'll show up wherever <laughs> you ask him to within five minutes. It's really quite remarkable, and I, I, you know, I want to thank him publicly because I think we he's should. done a tremendous thank amount you. of work. Thank you. I think we're also fortunate that Mike lives nearby, so you can call him, and he'll be almost anywhere within like five that days. Was that was a mistake. That was a mistake, Mike. Don't move. Thank you, Mike. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The next area of the budget that we're going to cover is transportation. I have Eric Carlin here to go over that portion. Good evening, everyone. Mr. Feliciano, Board President, Mr. Locher, Superintendent, Board Trustees, Central Administrators, Operational Personnel, people watching at home. Uh, thank you for this opportunity to present this district's transportation budget for the 2022-2023 school year. And then, so we'll get everybody. I'm going to shake their hands later. Yeah. I have a question uh, before you start. Do we yeah. have what you're going to go over? It's, it's the 5510 area. Page it's at the three. bottom of three. Right. Page three. Right. 5510. Yeah, 50, 50, it's at the bottom of yeah. under 1621 where Mike Thanks. left off. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. All right. Well, that's where I'll start. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, transportation, it's, uh, it's kind of been a bear this year. Um, as everybody knows, there's been shortages of drivers. It's hard to find people. We're operating down some buses. We're, our loads are pretty high, um, but we're trying to do the best we can to get the kids to school. Obviously, it's a very important, and they don't learn, I, you know, I don't know, personally, I know my kids with the remote instruction, that was a disservice. As hard as we tried and did the best we could, there's nothing that replaces in school instruction. I got loud. Um, so to start, um, we're going to start at 55, 10, 1500. That's basically just an indirect cost code. Uh, at the end of the year, people's salaries are budgeted in other areas, uh, such as mine, Superintendent Stacy's, people in the buildings who do transportation, take calls, deal with kids. Um, 
What we'll do at the end of the year to maximize our state aid is we will charge that to a transportation code since they are directly working towards the transportation operation. Uh, it's just they're funded elsewhere, so that's why you don't see any budget there. It's zero, but you will see expenditures. As that's something I do at the end of the year when we do the uh, ST3, we charge off the expenditures for transportation mm -hmm. to maximize it. Mm -hmm. um, 5510-1600, that's our central staff there in the, in the office. Um, that's contractual increase. 5510-1601, that's overtime. We haven't had as much staff in there. We're asking for a $3,000 increase there to help out with some of the work in the office. 5510-1900, uh, that's CSE bus monitors. That's our driver's assistants, we like to call them. Um, they go on all the buses where it's mandated per IEP as per special services. Um, that's a contractual increase. We're looking for a little bit of extra hours. We've had some tough time with staffing, just as drivers, just as driver's assistants, people getting out there who want to sit on a bus with kids in big numbers, <laughs> uh, in spite of the current pandemic. So we're, you know, we're, we're, we're leaning more on the current staff we have as opposed to being able to attract more, although we're constantly looking to hire. Uh, I, I'm always interviewing new staff whenever we could get them. Um, so we're looking for a little bit of increase there to, to, to handle that. 5510, 4460, again, that's another indirect cost area. We don't budget anything there. Uh, the money's budgeted in other areas, but such things as insurance, cleaning the buildings, maintenance, things that Mike does for the program, the custodial staff that walk into our office, we charge all that stuff to the transportation section to maximize our aid in that area. Uh, 5510, 4900, Yes. Where are you going? I, I'm just, I'm so, yeah. but this is a transportation budget. So you, can you explain again, like where do you charge it off at the end? Because like oh. these areas that are like, this is minus um, 100%, the other one was. Like, yeah, yeah, so, so so we don't budget. So if you're looking, you're talking about 5510, 1500 and 5510, uh, 4460. Mm -hmm. yes. So. Basically, you know, the superintendent's salary we went over last time was budgeted in the 1240 code. Stacy's salary and mine is in the 1310 code. But at the end of the year, what we'll do is, you know, the superintendent sometimes has to deal with make some decisions in transportation. Stacy has to deal with some issues in transportation. I directly deal with a lot of stuff in transportation. We'll have a secretary at every single building who has to answer transportation questions, deals with bus passes, handing them out. Their budget in other areas, 20, uh, 20, 10 or you know stuff like that. So at the end of the year, I do an indirect course. I do a journal entry. So I'll take a portion of that salary, set up a spreadsheet, charge maybe 5% of their salary to transportation, and do a journal entry and transfer the expense into these codes. So if it's budgeted elsewhere, I just now charge the expense to these codes to maximize our aid. So when we claim transportation, we get good aid on that. But what we're looking at is before those transfers. Is Correct. That so I don't. I won't budget anything there. They're budgeted in other places. But you'll see expenses because we're trying to maximize the district's revenues. So it's just kind of a <laughs> thing we do. You know, it'd be so, it'd be, it'd be so tough to budget five percent of someone's salary here, there, and a million other places. Um, does that explain Thank it? You. It doesn't. Okay. Sorry about that. If I was confusing at first. Uh, 5510, 5000, well, 5510, 4900, transportation bosses, I think, is where we left off. That's for our Edgelog transportation system. It's a transportation management software. It's where we put all our buses on the system, assign the, the kids a bus pass. Uh, I should say student, I like home students. Um, a bus pass and, and set everything up, and that manages our, our transportation, and so we. Mm -hmm. Keep a handle on everything. Uh, 55, 10, 5,000, material and supplies, sure. no increase there. And again, there was no increase with the, with the BOCES code. I didn't think I got to that explaining the code. Uh, and that's, that's our central office operation of the transportation department. Uh, so that's our staff, that's what we do. Uh, and then the next area I'm gonna get into is 5540. This is where we pay for the contracted transportation um, that we pay for other companies to do the services for us. The first five codes, 5540, 4001, 02, 05, 07, uh, these just relate to different types of buses. Um, to run a, a, a transportation department, you'll have different n number of buses with different number of hours. So you'll have a nine hour bus that might be able to do, you know, start at the high school, move up to the middle school, do a fresh, do an elementary school run, might do a midday run, might have a late bus run, so that makes it a nine hour bus. Some other buses you might be able to do three schools and get done in, in, in a six hour time period. Usually there's a gap in the middle, obviously, when the kids are in school. Um, then we have certain lift buses uh, for kids with, who require a wheelchair. 
Um, then we have four to six hour vans in district. Those are for our in district special needs students who require a minibus um, or if they have medical need, any, any type of situation like that. Um, we'll use an in-district van and then we have the four to six hours out of district vans which are private and parochial schools and things of that nature. Um, the numbers are kind of moving a little bit all over and it's partly because of COVID and well it is because of COVID. <laughs> it's not partly, it's all because of COVID. Um, and, and, and really what's happened was we've had to shift some of the uh, buses around. We've, we're operating this year down 10 six-hour buses um, for the large buses and we're operating up four, nine four-hour buses but down five five-hour buses and ten six-hour buses and part of the reason with the smaller bus it, it, it's kind of we're, we're forced to do it on the large buses I hate to say it we're just forced we can't find the staff to get out there to transport we've been trying the best we can the, the transportation company does yeoman's job they're trying to tr attract as many drivers as they possibly can to get in here uh, we've been able to skip along and get the services done um, and, and, and we're running a very tight ship uh, and we're somehow getting it all done um, it's kind of amazing I'm um, sorry, does that explain why 5540-4002, we have a um, minus 188-119 or 2.31%? Yeah, so it, it's basically the shifting of the transportation. Yeah. Um, we're, we're, we're relying less on six-hour buses, so as we could get less buses, we're, we're invoking more nine-hour buses oh. to do the job, to try to pick up a piece here and a piece there and a piece there and then get rid of the six. You know, so it's it's kind of it's how together, so. yeah, it's trying to put it together. It's it, it is a it's a it's a bear. Um, I'm show you the tra our edge log software. It's just amazing at what that really could do down to the stop, down to the student, down to the you know. It's a uh, for private parochial um, in district. That software that you were yeah, edge log. That's what we purchased through Boses. <laughs> yeah, when you think about what what it accomplishes. That's yeah. the maintenance on it. And we that's already the purchased it. <laughs> we, we did purchase it for quite a bit more, um, but that's the yearly maintenance on it. Um, for them to be responsive, um, what happens is uh, every day we get an upload from our e-school system. So the people working hard on registration, when they get a new student in, they put them in an e-school. At night, while we're sleeping, Candace has operations that'll run, that'll drop it into our edge log software. In the morning, we're like, oh, look at all the students we got and what we have to do. And then we got to go and route them, put them on a bus. Um, that's how kind of the whole process works. I like to say it's magic, but it's not. <laughs> it's a lot of hard work. Um, and we do have ladies there who do a great job, and the bus company does a wonderful job for us in, in that regard. Um, but even, um, I was explaining the, the, the vans, the four, five, and six hour vans. You can see we're up in four hour vans, but we're down in the five and six hour vans. And I think that's partly because our, our private school, parochial school enrollment has decreased by a couple of hundred uh, students. So we're shifting more what we would usually do is if we transport some of our industry kids on one bus and then for a piece of it we'd send them out to do a private and parochial run we have less of those going out so we don't need as many six hours we're dealing with more four hours um, so it, it's just kind of how things are affecting the transportation within the district um, and we're trying to meet those needs and deal with shortages and drivers and trying to do the best we can there um, and that's that's basically from 5540-4001 to 5540-4108, uh, that's our contracted transportation. We do use other pieces for 5540-4002 for interscholastic athletics. That's to get our sports teams to competitions. Um, when they're playing other schools, we have the same bus company come in um, and do that. Some, some of the activities are you know, charter buses if we're doing states and stuff like that, if the kids are successful enough to get to that level, which I know a number of our teams have been performing at, at those levels to be able to participate in state level activities. Um, 5540, 4003, curricular activities, program handicap. Uh, that's if we need a specific bus for a specific reason. Uh, we, we budget 10,000 there. Um, we haven't used it in a number of years, but if we don't have it there and something comes up, it's kind of, you know, we know it's there if, if we need it. Um, 5540, 4003, curricular activities, high school. Um, as you can see in the last few years, we really haven't been doing a whole lot of curricular activities. We're kind of just focusing on the business of educating the students. Um, 
hopefully we'll get back into that. Uh, there is no budget there this year, but we can do a budget transfer if needed. 5540, 4, Field Trip Central. Um, we just always budget 5,000 there. That's to help the buildings out if they want to run a field trip. Um, I know the bus company offers some incentives when they have openings where there's buses are available. They'll give us a tour at a discounted price. We get that out to the buildings. Sometimes they jump on that and are able to afford a trip uh, for the students to go to different places to experience different things. Yeah, yeah, no, anything. I'm all for it, but that's going to be a, a bigger than me question. <laughs> sure. You know, there are many, many opportunities for students to be able to go out and explore, and we're, you know, hopefully the signing crown will be done right. uh, within a short period of time, and we can start to do some of that. So I would like to see that director. Would we be at a disadvantage because of COVID? You know, if this was pre COVID. You know, the kids, did, our students could go just about anywhere, but now things are a little bit different until we know that they can go to many, many other places. But it seems like a lot of st uh, schools aren't giving that many field trips because of the virus. But I'm talking about my experience Not before the way. we even knew about COVID. I'm that, sorry. You know, it's always been a Yes, challenge. you're right. To you're find money right. from, I'm sorry, my mic was off. It's always been a challenge to find money for especially transportation. It's been you know, more, it's students been more than a raise challenge. Money or <laughs> parents will pay, but, right. mm -hmm. you know, especially like, I know, like the Liberty Science Center has become a popular, you know, kind of a trip, mm -hmm. but it's in New Jersey, so you have to, you know, it, it's a larger expense. So that kind of experience for our kids, when right. we're able to do it, I would like to make sure we have the money for it. Yeah, there's a few ways that transportation occurs, and you're right, there are at one case, students fundraise. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's a, that's in a limited. You, you know, that's that doesn't happen often. There are other ways. We have uh, arts and ed, and I think they can apply for transportation there. We, I, I hear you. I mean, and actually, we've discussed it in cabinet where you know this year in particular, we did want kids mm -hmm. to go on on field trips, and we are we are sending kids on field trips. They are going out. I'm sure if I ask Wanda and Rhonda, they'll they'll, you know, tell us about a few off the top of their head. So we are sending kids on field trips. Okay. There are though, to your point, there are some places that have restricted and you can't you can't get in anymore. Right. Yeah. But this year we would determine to give our kids as many experiences as possible. Because I think one of the things that we do really well here pre COVID was we did have we did run lots of field trips. Okay, and, 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 you know, that's also, we're also, a lot of teachers right now are hesitant to, to take them on field trips. Right. Because that's a, now a, a, a added responsibility because of the potential of, you know, contact tracing and COVID, et cetera. So, you know, but I do, as soon as the floodgates open, kids should, I think that's, a, we have so many great experiences yeah. here on Long Island, in the city, obviously the city, as you know, are really yeah. off limits. So some of the field trips that we used to do into the city right. are not occurring yeah. at all. But sure. to your point, Julie, yeah, I mean, I, I think that that looks like a low number field trips central. That was just something we started a few years ago, probably about four or five years ago, right? Where we just said, you know what? let's hold it some money here at central so right. when people call us for a special trip we'll take it out of here uh but you know I, I you know increasing it i would be you know all for it right i mean it has increased i obviously when we drew the budget in 2019 for 2020 we didn't know about COVID. but if you look at the 2019 2020 budget that was 38.25 so mm -hmm. even though we increased it and we haven't used it mm -hmm. i just want to make sure that we continue right. to have some monies. Right. Yeah. Could I ask, so do you guys, do you remember some field trips that some of the kids have done? I remember Lawrence Small has a lot of field trips. Um, they, but, but this year they haven't done as many, but they mm -hmm. did like, I think about two or three field trips this year off the top of my head. I would not be able to remember, but I do know it's budgeted for. There's a whole list of field trips budgeted for in my 611 grant, um, but that's for the ungraded population. Um, I don't have funding available for all of the students with special needs, but those kids do go on trips and they do actually take advantage of the radio bus and go to the store and they 
shop and different things. Um, I know they went to a pumpkin patch. Um, they went to uh, a museum, but they, you know, there's another trip that they went. It was like a colonial place. Where is that? Um, the Museum of Naval Aviation. No, no, no. Oh, it's okay. a colonial, like from. In like Bethpage? Like employed, that's the state over there? Yeah, that's where they went. Okay. That's where? where they went. They just recently went to that. Mm -hmm. Where, you know, I think it's, it looks like back in the days when Roosevelt... By the colonial yeah, time. Yeah. 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 War, like mock battle yeah. and stuff yeah. like yeah. that. Yeah. So, so to the point that I think that, that Miss Young is making is that, is that I think that... Uh, I am the 40-something. Old Bethpage. Oh, that's what I said. Okay. So, so to the point that, that's being made, I, I think that there is also transportation money in other, uh, uh, you know, other uh, accounts and other in other uh, uh, departments and grants i think that the buildings mm -hmm. also right. have Individual their own their own themselves. transportation money just like special mm -hmm. services does and this is just a uh a central so central as in this as in yeah. your office as in central having the ability to say okay we have some money that's going to be able to go for, towards for that example yep. um sheriff Toulon, okay <laughs> is going to be he was going to be inaugurated on January 1st, but because of the COVID, he actually backed it up until March. Mm -hmm. So uh, Chief and a bunch of MBK kids, okay, are going to take tra uh, transportation over uh, to the office and be there for their inauguration. We're very excited about it. That, for example, will come out of this central field trip, okay? He, he gives me a call, I'll give him a budget code, Say okay, charge it to that, okay. Or very frequently, quite to be mm -hmm. quite honest and transparent. Sometimes Suffolk Transportation, if I just give them a call or Eric mm -hmm. or Stace, they'll, they'll toss us a free field trip. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. It, it wouldn't come out of their grant then. It it won't come out. No, not this particular one. Yeah, this will come out of. We'll we'll have to pay for the bus. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. But there are other times to to Robert's point that a a principal may pay right. for transportation mm -hmm. at a certain mm -hmm. budget code. Yeah. I just remember one time we had tickets donated to take students to see um, w one of the popular Broadway shows. They, we got, they were very good, expensive seats, and they were donated, and then we had to deal with the challenge of how do we get there? Right. You know, how do we get 40 yeah. some kids into the city? Mm -hmm. And I don't remember exactly, I was working with one of the community organizations, if they paid or, you know, what hoops we had to go through, but I remember that being a challenge. And sometimes there are, you know, great opportunities our kids can have. And if we could eliminate that challenge, right. I think it would just be, right. you know, a good idea to do. We, we allocated funds under the emergency funds for mm -hmm. field trips, so we have a significant amount of money there. Okay. We use Title III and Title I as well. Okay. Um, and I believe that we're going to have an third one that we use for the field trips. So And the radio buses, I know that you mentioned, are big I just asset. want to say that um, I know that this board has really pushed hard for inclusion and uh, transportation. And I know Ms. O'Connor has done such a wonderful job of ensuring that if a student with disabilities require a special bus mm -hmm. or someone to even go on a trip to chaperone. I mean, recently this year, we had to pay for an adult to go on a trip, they, the bus driver had to stay overnight, right, mm -hmm. um, to support a student, you know, with a disability, and we have to pay for that a special bus for that particular student mm -hmm. to be involved. Mm -hmm. so I had a <laughs> for pushing for inclusion because it's important that yeah. our kids that that doesn't you know get in the way or interfere with right. our kids being included in those type of mm -hmm. activities. I know we have the same con or similar conversation when we talk about nurses, right? Because now nurses are required to go on trips. That's so you it exactly. And very frequently we have to, you know, pre-COVID, I guess, I don't know too yeah. much recently, but we were paying nurses mm -hmm. uh, to travel with certain students. And, yeah. and again, I think it's terrific. I mean, so no one is excluded. Thank you. I had a question in regards to the extracurricular activities. So mm -hmm. like for next year or um, hopefully soon, if we provide like after school programs or tutoring or anything like that, that you know, extended day or whatever, um, will transportation be able to cover that, like take the kids home? 
Okay, that's wow. That was like you know what you just brought up something that I was talking to Miss Palmer about earlier today, and I, I actually was going to mention it to the board uh, when I had a chance. But one of the things that we're trying to do this year is have extended day programs, okay, as well as Saturday academies. But what we want to do is is not just the Saturday academies, which you know have been successful. We're going to in institute those as well. But we really do. You know, after speaking with the leadership, the principals, that many students would stay after school. Be easier for families, okay, if you're in an elementary school, to just stay an additional hour and get some intensive tutoring and one on one help or small group instruction, and then take a bus home at that point. Now, traditionally, we have not had uh, late buses for elementary schools. So Ms. Palmer asked me about that today, and I know the, the whole cabinet's been working on this. And I haven't had a chance to ask Stacy, but I'm confident that we will be able to find some money, whether it's through grants or the general fund, and give kids this year extended day program, okay, and then transportation home. And I think that would be a major help for kids. And I'm thinking twi we're thinking twice a week. In every school. So, mm -hmm. you know, whether you're Twin Pines, whether you're Oak Park, Southeast, whatever the case may be, they'll, they'll, you know, right now, actually, I think it's posted today for teachers. Uh, it's been posted. We're going to close, I think, on Friday. Then we see how many teachers, where it is, uh, and then we're going to start, I guess, surveying the kids and the families, find out who will take advantage of this. And then we have to talk to transportation and we have to devise how we're going to get the kids home. So the money that we received because of the COVID, wouldn't that be money that we can utilize for this? Because yes. Well, it was we meant to mitigate some of the losses. No, it, 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 that's right. Le that's part of the learning loss. They, right. they actually gave us a specific amount of money and then they identified a certain amount of that money has to be spent right. for learning loss. So I'm sh certain well, that we're going be to be able to take right? it. Yeah. Right. I'm mm -hmm. certain that we're going to be able to take this money out of uh, those federal, that federal money that was sent to us. Is that money included in this general fund, or is there a separate kind of a? That's a separate fund. Separate. It's separate. Okay. It's not in here at all. all right. Yeah. This is all right. So the general even fund. Though, like what you're proposing, then we don't really have to find place here if we can take it out of that. Yes. Of money. Mm -hmm. They've already, they've already, you know, uh, Member Vincent actually presented it, but mm -hmm. we actually have already divided up the money, and we do, and you, you can actually, you know, transfer the money within, you know, to, you know, uh, within the fund. But yeah, we've already identified for extended learning. So, so I you, imagine that's where the transportation. But would that include? Right. That's, that's that's my point. So I know we've budgeted for having some after-school activities. Did that include transportation when we did that initial budgeting? That is something that we've talked about, but remember how Eric said about the indirect costs, how you see some lines without a budget, mm -hmm. yet we transfer costs in? That's something I'd, that the late transportation, I'd advocate to go into the general fund so we can get aided on it and push another cost into the stimulus funds, which, won't, which aren't mm -hmm. aided. So it's, if, when we figure out how we want to do something, then Eric and I will sit down together and figure out the best way to do it so we maximize our funds all around. Mm -hmm. Right? I, no, exactly. yeah, I love that aid. <laughs> That's fantastic, of course. So uh, it's, it's an awesome idea because of the fact that there's some students that, do, you know, parents don't have transportation and could use, um, yeah. you know, the extra perks right. activities or, um, you know, the extra help or the enrichment, enrichment that we usually have. How about the summertime? Well, again, that's going to be some. If you remember last year, we obviously had quite a few summer camps. Yeah. And this comes up. You know, every single year we talk about whether we should offer transportation. It's something that I think we're going to have to discuss again, right? Wanda, I know last year we talked we wanted to run it. I know certain uh, students do get it, you know, Rhonda. We'll look at it this year if we can pull it off. Uh, it's, it's not as easy as you think. Now, when I'm talking about the elementary kids, remember the high school kids, 
and middle school students and freshman center, they're used to what's called an activity run. Mm -hmm. So when we pick up a, you know, when somebody gets driven, they're not driven to their, their morning and afternoon bus stop. They're dropped off. They might be a couple of blocks away because they just drop them off on a main street. That's an older student. So we really have to discuss how we're going. It's not as easy as, oh, we're going to just provide transportation because we have first graders. Yeah. If, if they take, I don't know, we might be offering it to first and second graders, let's say, for argument's sake. They stay an extra hour. They're used to get getting dropped off, you know, at a specific spot. So, do, you know, the question now becomes, do we offer that entire school's bus run? Okay, as you can imagine, that can get costly. So these are all things that we'd have to, sounds great, yeah. you know, but... Uh, <laughs> It's not as easy as it sounds. Plus, first of all, as Eric mentioned, we may not even have the bus drivers. That's but, right. You know, uh, that's number one. But just, we might yeah, have I think we need to keep equity in mind that, you know, these things that we're mentioning should be available to all students, regardless of their ability or their parents' ability to bring them to right. a school or pick them up from a school. So I would like us to just consider that a little more. You know, oh, when yeah. We think about the program. Mm -hmm. Sure. Well, it's the reason we're going down this road. We we think that we'll be able to help more kids. They're more inclined to stay an extra hour, uh, and I'm just using an hour, but I think that's what we're going to stick to. Mm -hmm. The issue is, can we provide transportation? Right. You know, uh, you know, it, it's not as easy as you can imagine because remember, you know, lots of drivers are doing other runs in the afternoon. You know, they go to, to the next thing. Although at the end of elementary school, most of our drivers are finished except for the activity runs in the secondary school. So we may be able to. Ms. Olsho, could, could do, um, to the point that you're making, uh, the only way we're going to find out is if we are asking the parents, mm -hmm. you know, what, they're, what they will or won't be able to do uh, if we are implementing or at this point, when we do implement yeah. that after school program, how quickly can we send out a survey so we can get the feedback and you can have the data in terms of how we can roll this out? I mean, is that possible? Can we do this, you know, sooner than later so that we are, we are I think we're ready looking, for, for yeah, September? Oh, no, we, we're doing that this year. Well, no, so, so right. we are, yeah, so right. that we are ready. But uh, I, I'm not exactly sure of the dates. Like, Right now, we're looking for staff. You know, one of the things that you have to do before you run these extra programs is have to you have to make sure that the staff is available. Mm -hmm. So that's what uh, that's why it was posted. We're going to canvas the staff. Hopefully, they you know we get uh, enough teachers that volunteer. And remember, we're looking at our teachers, perm sub substitutes, anybody that is certified can can uh, you know come work for us. Now, once we have that then we'll we'll have that survey so i would imagine in another week or uh, you know that week to two weeks that will go out i know we'd probably like to accomplish this before a february uh recess mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so that when we come back in in march you know we can look to do this we're already i mean the cabinet has already you know put together uh you know instructional materials kind of designed what the app that one hour remember we never do anything uh off the cuff we don't shoot from the hip around here. All of our extracurricular activities are choreographed. We buy the materials, we train the teachers, uh, and we have, they all have specific, uh, you know, uh, books to use, readings to use, and the hour will be choreographed mm -hmm. on how to do it. So, it, it, you know, I'm hoping a lot of people, now we're having this conversation publicly and people are listening. <laughs> I don't want to disappoint people. Right. If we can't do the yeah. transportation, I'm going to say we're going to try to move mountains. That's why I wanted to talk to you guys <laughs> before. But it's a good thing to talk about, but you have to do it. But I don't want to, I, I, you can see the challenges that we have. We have challenges, just regular transportation, adding another run might be <laughs> difficult, but we're going to. And, and the reason, and the reason why I brought it up is because you know, as a parent, you know, you you may be willing to uh, uh, allow for your child to be there, if you know that this is going to happen on you know certain days of the week that you're going to provide the transportation uh, yourself. Right. So I, I think that that, that, that might that right. might just help you mitigate right. or answer some of the, the, the questions that I you see have. What you're saying. Yeah. So that's what I'm saying. So getting that information back right. to you so that you know how to how to proceed. That, right. That's all it is. Right. I see. Yeah. yeah. No good point. Thank you, Eric. Okay. Right. So um, 
Where were we? I think we were just okay. saying that right. the field trip central was just a small portion of what we provide for <laughs> field trips. <laughs> uh, I think that's where we concluded from that, but there is a lot of other places that we do take field trip work for. Um, 5540 4430 BE transportation um, is for the student workers that we have. Uh, so a lot of them come here and work in places in the district. I think Mark Ingram has set it up where we have networked those, those, those students to be able to go to outside locations to work at other businesses to provide them with real world experiences. And that's the transportation that we provide to get them to those work sites. Um, 5540, music and band. Um, all these codes are being held flat. Um, that is obviously for the transportation of our music and band program who does a wonderful job. They usually make it to Syracuse every year, uh, do very well up there. Um, but this is the code that we use for transporting the uh, music and band to their competitions. Um, 5540, 4005 fuel. Um, we're holding the study at, at, at a million. Um, we haven't reached that level in past years um, because we've had favorable fuel prices. Um, they're becoming less favorable. Um, if anybody's ordered home heating oil or <laughs> just pulled up to the gas pump. You see the prices are going up. Um, so we're going to try to keep that level and if we don't spend it, it obviously goes back to the community. Uh, 5540, 4400, McKinney Vento Homeless. Uh, we, we, we developed this code um, last year. Um, there was a regulation saying that we have to transport students who are McKinney Vento. McKinney Vento is just a, I guess, a homeless child who um, could live in another district and decide to still go here um, even after they enter permanent housing for that year and if it's a terminal year in the building for another year and the district is obligated to provide transportation and those transportation costs can go up pretty swiftly if you have a child who decides to become homeless and move out to Southampton because that's where they could find uh, a place to live with a family member, um, an extended family member uh, before they become permanent. So we could be sending a bus two times a day out that far. Um, so what we did is we developed this code to kind of track those costs to see what we were spending uh, in, in this particular area. Um, and that's what that is for. It's, it's, we've been putting 10,000 in there and seeing where it's been going. Um, so far, we, we've been doing okay there. Um, so we're going to keep it flat. Uh, 5540, 4, public service. This is... Um, so you see, what is this? We put 5000 here every year and we never spend it. <laughs> We've had um, students that go to certain schools where they can take the train or the bus to get there, rather than a uh, public bus rather than, you know, our buses. And, you know, if a student agrees to that, we, we send them that way. So that's what we would use that code for. And we have had it in the past. Just it's, it's sporadic. It's sporadic, yeah. So public service carrier, I guess. Mm -hmm. um, 5581, I'm getting old, I'm going to use glasses. 4900 BOCES. Uh, nothing is budgeted there. Uh, 55, 99, 4,000 contingency, uh, 150. We use this just in the event that something blows up and we need some money to take care of transportation. We have a little bit extra there to handle it, um, usually what that code is for. And we usually do a pretty good job, so we really never hit that code. Um, but you never know when gas prices start soaring and you can't find drivers and, you know. Who knows what's going to happen? Is the BOCES transportation for our students who attend out of district BOCES programs? Or is that? No, that would be for um, like our, our um, driving assistants. They have to take a physical performance test, and they take that initially with Suffolk Transportation. If they fail for some reason, they get retested through BOCES. So the kids that actually go to the BOCES programs, they're in those first four or five lines under 5540. The six-hour vans, the, yes. you know, the four-hour yeah, vans. the shuttles that go to the BOCES program. And that's basically the whole transportation budget. Does anybody have any particular questions in regards to that? Simone had a question. Oh, yeah, with the public service, because I know of kids who attend um, schools and they take the train and the bus. It, are the parents being reimbursed? How does that work? We would actually buy the ticket, like a monthly pass or, or something like that. Are the like parents that. aware? Because I know of kids that attend that take the train, and I don't think the parents are aware. Huh? They, they attend private schools mm -hmm. from here? They live in the district and attend private schools in the city and so on. Oh, the city is beyond our yeah. transportation limit, so we wouldn't bus, we wouldn't allow that into the city. They'd have to be within 15-mile radius of our district if they're in a private school. Uh -huh. 
after that they have to. But well, we don't have a lot of other than buses. I guess trains. That would do that. So we wouldn't reimburse them for nothing at all, even if it's you know up to 15 miles or they would have to be within the radius for them to be bus. It would have to be an eligible private school in order for us to reimburse. Okay. okay. Thank you. You would think that the Kelly Vento, is there another code somewhere else um, that we're providing services for the McKinley Vento students? Yeah, that's a temporary code that we do until we can get them on to a, a regular um, bus, and then it goes back into, you know, those first uh, four or five codes, the, well, probably a van code. We're not going to send a large bus for one child. Right. Right. Um, but we may have to put them in a cab temporarily until we can get something going, so that's really what that code is used for. Okay. Right. Yeah, there's something unusual. Right. But they're, the they're being bused. Oh, yeah. you know, we, we have a number that are being bused from other districts. And that's incorporated in the other, in the four-hour yeah. van, probably. Should we keep 10000 in there? I mean, that sounds like a lot when the most we've spent is like 1400 <laughs> pre-COVID. I don't know. Um, Could we maybe use some of that for field trips or something? If, if it's not spent, it always goes back to the, back to the community. I know, but I, um, just so we anticipate, you know, mm -hmm. put it in a more realistic line that maybe could be used. We could certainly shift some of that, or even if we leave it budgeted like that, and then something comes up during the year, we can transfer funds out of that code into the field trip code or somewhere else. Mm -hmm. So but it's, it's flexible. We start there instead of having to transfer. Maybe we can. something we can talk yeah, I'll, about. I'll talk to you. Yeah, I think that's a good idea. Interesting. Because we could always do the reverse transfer as well. Sure. Mm -hmm. If we have you know, an area that's used right. more, maybe. Understand, I mean, I, well, as long as I've been here, I don't know if anybody, we'll, we'll never turn down anybody for transportation. But, you know, I hear what you're saying. I mean, mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. you know, why not? I mean, I hope next year is a banner year in terms of those field trips. Thank you very much, Any Eric. Questions? Okay. Thank you Eric very much for the opportunity. Have a good Eric evening. Too, if I could. Eric, Absolutely. Eric also has did a tremendous job for us, especially at the beginning of the year. Uh, you know, it was, yeah, he, he really did remarkable work. The community was a little frustrated in the beginning of the year. But that really, uh, that was because transportation was having a, a tremendously difficult time getting, uh, not Suffolk Transportation as bad as other transportation companies, but we were down, we were down drivers, we were down buses, and you know, Eric and, and Stacy actually jumped in and they were, you know, rerouting, uh, handling parent complaints and phone calls. I should also mention too that Eric and Stacy for uh, 10 days were working in the uh, transportation department earlier this year because all three uh, clericals were out uh, due to COVID and they were, um, so they had to, you know, answer phone calls, uh, you know, get onto the computer, you know, handle routing things, whatever the heck they do on the computer with these buses. And they did it, and, uh, I, you know, they did a remarkable job. And also, since Eric has taken over, I mean, I, I think it's, you, you know, it's a tough department. It's, you, it's tough to please everybody, but I think uh, he's done a remarkable job over the last two years, you know. Thank you. And our, our driver's assistants work hard every day. Um, Rhonda has allowed us to use Sean Coffin. We've given them training this year that they've never had before. It's called CPI, wow. Crisis yeah. Prevention and Prevention, yeah. to give the DA some tools yeah. on how to manage students to recognize when they're getting a little anxious and how to kind of diffuse mm -hmm. that, the right things to say as opposed to the wrong things to say that might get them similar. So the DAs have been getting a lot of positive feedback. Yes. They really appreciate it. They feel like, you know, the district's really looking out for them. Um, thanks to Ron and Sean being able to come to some of these yeah, trainings. Uh, we've run about four of the workshops so far and at our refresher course, so I think we just set it for May 5th uh, this year. We're going to have Sean come back. Oh, I haven't talked to him yet, so if you don't tell him yet, I'm going to ask. i got to ask. <laughs> if he'll come to the show and do a little bit more on that, but it's been working out really well. So, uh, you know, I'm, I'm proud of all the driver's assistants. Myrna, who, who manages them, does an outstanding job, uh, as, as well as the, the ladies in the office. They're really... They really pull their weight in helping out with the department. So I, thank I, you I very much. Thank you. Thank, thank you. Thank you, Eric.
those were the budget areas that we want to cover for tonight's meeting, but I just want to mention something very quickly. We've um, talked tonight um, about, you know, having some money, you know, available to us, and I just wanted to talk a little bit about why, and, um, and that goes right back to our foundation aid, and just a very, very brief history of foundation aid. Um, it originated in 2006 after the campaign for fiscal equity. It was a promise made to all school districts that um, foundation aid would be phased in as per the formula that was established, and it would help the low wealth school districts, um, you know, to equalize them with, with the higher wealth school districts, so more aid would be aimed at those lower wealth school districts. Um, it started to be phased in in 2007, and then if you think back to that time, we had the double dip recession. Um, so although we had two years of a phase in, it stopped there, and then foundation aid actually went down for a number of school districts. If you remember back to gap elimination aid, um, it was a terrible time, you know, especially for us, a district so dependent on um, state aid. So. Brentwood um, recently, a few years ago, filed a complaint with the uh, Federal Office of Civil Rights as well as some other um, uh, political uh, subdivisions. And we, you know, basically saying the foundation aid formula is not being followed. We're being um, cheated out of our foundation aid that, aid that we're rightfully owed as per the formula. And we threw out a number there that we're down $135 million in foundation aid per year. And that's every year we get short. We were getting short at that. So the governor last year, 2021, stated, um, agreed that we were underfunded and started to phase that foundation in, foundation aid in. That's actually this current year, I should say, 21, 22. We got a significant increase of $35 million in our foundation aid for this current school year. Um, last week, the governor released her budget. Um, and again, this is the governor's budget. It is not the final state budget. And continued that, um, that pledge to phase in our foundation aid. So our projection right now for the 22-23 school year, and that's the year we're talking about building this budget, um, is a $59 million increase in foundation aid. So that would be year two of the three-year phase in. Again, it's a projection. It's the governor's budget. Typically, um, in a school year, the governor comes out with a budget in January. Then it gets negotiated at the state level. We've gone up several times to Albany to kind of you know, help on, explain our situation. And it typically goes up. Um, from the governor's budget, our final number, what we get. Don't know if I could say that'll happen I this year. Because so. <laughs> uh, we did quite well with the governor's budget. Um, but we won't know for sure what we're going to get um, until April 1st. So I just have a printout up here of um, what we received. Again, subject to change. I want to make sure I'm clear on that. Um, our overall change shows it 56 million, but the foundation aid increase, and I have arrows pointing to it there. Um, is 59 million. The reason uh, that change is going down a little bit, um, I had presented debt service last week, uh, two weeks ago when we had the budget meeting, and we had a capital payment that kind of fell off. So our, our what we have to pay out for the construction in the district went down by over 2 million. Well, so did our building aid. You usually try to time that together. So building aid is only going down because we paid something off. Um, so they're not going to aid us anymore. So that's why our overall aid would go down a little bit. But our foundation aid increase, you could see that they're projecting is 59 million. So statewide um, in the governor's budget, it's a $2 billion increase for education. Um, 1.6 billion of that is foundation aid, 470 million of that is for expense-based aids. If we think back to the former governor's budget a year ago, he wanted to combine expense-based aids into one category. So that would be our BOCES aid, um, our trans transportation aid, those were the two big ones there, our library materials aid. Once you combine that, you don't aid that on the individual expenditures with those categories, it's essentially freezing it. Maybe you'll get a slight increase, um, but essentially the growth that you experience in those categories, you wouldn't get aided on anymore. 
that proposal is not there this year. It's simply a, a positive, the governor's budget is just a positive budget for education all the way around. So I just wanted to, um, you know, let everybody know that. We'll talk about revenue a little bit later on, but that's the highlights of the governor's budget. Um, any questions on that? Any chance we could get lights on the field? <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> what field do you, what do you mean? Football field. So well, we can have Friday night under the, oh, we'll the lights the football. Well, hang around for a couple of years. We're going to have lots of lights every week. <laughs> <laughs> yep. So you know what? So if I could just add to this, so typically, typically in in a, in any given year, you know we are excited to get you know an additional you know ten million dollars, mm -hmm. nine million dollars. God, I mean it was it was just so painful, um, and uh, it was just so those are really really rough times. Uh, but we had to make some tough decisions back then to make sure that we maintain the integrity of the finances of the district. Uh, those issues are no longer here, um, but that's you know that doesn't mean that we are going to spend without you know really really critiquing everything that it is that we're doing and and I think that's the message that I want to send across you know uh, just because we have this mm -hmm. this this incredible amount of money coming our way doesn't mean that we're not paying attention. Um, and I know that, you know, Stacy and the board members and Mr. Lochner, that's all ingrained in us now uh, because we are so appreciative of what it is that we're getting now. We've got to make sure that we are spending wisely. And I know that uh, I think it's been three board meetings in a row uh, that Mr. Fritz has come up and he has mentioned this. You know, we've got to make sure that we are spending this wisely. And, and I just want to say this publicly that, you know, that we are committed to spending this money wisely because again you know we don't know when the tide's going to change we don't know when this is uh if if it's ever going to change we hope that it doesn't but you know it's possible so so as far as you know as i'm concerned i've said this you know you know numerous times you know i'm looking to rebuild the district district back for the next 50 years so that we are you know setting ourselves up uh using this money wisely for generations to come, and I know that that's the commitment that each and every one of us has. So, thank you, Stacy, for your stewardship, you know, throughout these really tough times. And I hope, and I hope that this budget season <laughs> is so much easier and so much more. Uh, 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 it's 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 not as stressful as all the priors. I know that you've been a great assistance to us uh, throughout the year. So, thank you for that. Thank you. And like you said, you know, we talked about transportation earlier, late buses, you know, if we could do that at the elementary school. And I'm always going to look at that, you know, to see what's the best way to do that. Even if it's a small amount of aid that comes back to the district, we're going to get every penny back, you know, mm -hmm. regardless Absolutely. of how much we get in state aid each year. That's just, I feel very passionate about that. I do that, you know, for myself. I do that for the school district. Eric absolutely feels the same way. So that thinking is never going to stop. Yeah, so, and, and to anybody who's just looking at this right now, and you know, maybe you weren't here or weren't tuned in for the previous meetings, you know, we're, tonight's meeting was focused specifically on operations and transportation. So, you know, we are, I do believe, and I, and I believe this with all my heart, that we are have, we have a, a very balanced approach in terms of how it is that we're spending money. So it's on the operational side and it's on the academic side to the point that Mr. Lotion was talking about earlier. We are building in these educational programs uh, you know, before and after school. So it is, I believe, a very balanced approach as we're moving forward and, and you know, trying to figure out how to best spend uh, this money. It so. is. We are um, very controlled. Okay. We, you know, the cabinet and I meet and we discuss, uh, you know, next year's increases. As you know, uh, we're going to a nine period day at the uh, high school. And we've, you know, we're, we're very careful about the subjects and the the, uh, the coursework that we're bringing in and the teachers as well so yeah we're, we're very careful and it, it is ingrained in us it's uh, which is not a bad thing I mean I think you always have to be very conservative and careful about how you spend your money because quite frankly I mean you say it it it, it will end it, it will eventually end I, I think we will go back to the days of 
you know, uh, <coughs> sitting at the edge of your seat and we're only getting a few million dollars. And you have to remember just two years ago, we actually went down five hundred thousand mm -hmm. dollars which was pretty devastating for the district mm -hmm. and we're certainly never going to forget that uh, and that's what you know so I, I think we'll always be very careful about what we, we spend uh, I you certainly know. hope my request for lights <laughs> didn't prompt my uh, <laughs> no <laughs> frivolous uh, spending I um. love that is not frivolous <laughs> Now, the reason I uh, bring that up, uh, Eileen, you know that uh, we've mentioned, obviously, the turf fields. Yeah. And, uh, you know, part of that project um, will, will include lights. Right. You know, and one of the things that we're really excited about is, obviously, a walking track for the community, which will be part of the construction project. And, uh, you, you know, we're going to put lights on two sets of fields. And we'll have to discuss, obviously, you it's know. It's always uh, nice if we have the opportunity, if opportunity arises, that we capitalize and if we can do it beforehand. Absolutely. Or not. Right, I mean, right. But, you know, considering all options and mm -hmm. considering the budget, you know. Right. Not to put us in a hole over lights, but if mm -hmm. we could do it, it would be nice. Yeah. Now, did you mean across the street here? Is that what you The football field. Okay. Oh, this one. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I don't know where we are anymore. <laughs> okay. All right. Yeah, I was. Just, that's that's not our. She was, she was pointing the wrong way. She was. Yeah. The board yeah, this, oh, the, oh, the board so she was, yeah. Okay. That's why yeah. I, I didn't really answer you right away because you were yeah. pointing your cross. You don't mind me because I'm, thinking, I'm sitting in my seat in the back. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I wasn't sure where you were going with it. Yeah. Sorry. I thought not, you were pointing to your house. That's not our okay. domain. Um, so, so at some point in the at some point in the near future, we will roll that out so yeah. that the community is aware of what the plan is. Um, you know, I've 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 had a chance to glimpse at it, and it's just spectacular. It really is. You know, just puts it puts this district on a par with so many other districts who've yeah. had the luxury of having the resources and the money to do these things for their community, and and it's just really it's incredibly exciting. I know that you know that 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 we, we've been talking about these things, we've been dreaming about these things for such a long time. Right. Um, look, you know, it's, it sounds like it's going to be a reality. You know, I'm, I'm hoping that we could, you know, break ground on, on something, you know, and we'll, we'll have something that's, you know, that's going to be something to celebrate. Right. Um, and then get it done as quickly as possible yeah, because yeah. we have so many other projects to do. So, um, so yeah, so you were pointing the wrong way, but the lights. Yeah, that's fine. So, 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 <laughs> but just just so that you know, there's this minor detail that the lights would have to come in at the tail end and of the entire project. The right. But 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 all that is 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 thought of. So well, well, you know, I'd like a concession stand. Remember when we had that architect oh, yeah. come in? Mm -hmm. Oh, that's that's that, we're getting that. We're that's in the plan. Concession stand. He said yep. he could do it underneath the. The back, we're getting that. The yep, that's, that's, <laughs> yeah, that's in that's in there. You know? We're gonna have a concession stand. Uh, what we'd like to do is also have bathrooms out there, yeah. concession yeah. stand, and I'd love to have a second floor uh, where it could be an observation room as well as like a little classroom. Yep. You know, uh, for, you so know, so nice. that's all part of the plan. Yep. Yeah. No, it's pretty exciting. It should be no. It should be noted too that actually is prior to um, you know this 59 million potential 59 we actually did a heck of a job budgeting the last few years so we were preparing for this you know even prior to this kind of windfall here yeah uh, so oh, I have a, is this that money I know we are using money from this year that we're living now but the project won't be completed for another possibly one or two years right right, right. so that we're able to hold on to that money and not spend it as long as we allocate it? Yeah, that's in a capital that fund, so we're able to hold on to that. And it takes time. The state knows it takes time to get the plans through them and, you know, and then the actual construction phase. So, yeah, that'll stay there. I just wanted to make sure we weren't in a spend it or lose it kind nope. of situation. Mm -hmm. where, oh, I you see. Know, get yeah. yeah, no, it's in the capital reserve fund. Okay. I am excited. So thank you to everyone for the presentations tonight. Thank you, Ms. O'Connor. Um, we are having another meeting next week. That'll be special services. Um, special week. services, yep. So um, to the viewing community, thank you so much for tuning in. And we hope to see you next week. So could I have a motion to adjourn tonight's meeting? Motion. Motion by Trustee Felix. Could I have a second? Second. Trustee Moore, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstentions? So moved. Good night. Thank you, everyone. Good night. Good night. Thank you. Thank you.